Hi everyone! Um, some of you have requested a tutorial for how I make my plushies and pouches out of felt and I've just been making these little Mamigoma ones so I thought I might just show you the methods that I use for all my felt plushies and pouches. Now, um, Retarded Vampire Cat is the one who actually has a tutorial on these so please don't think I'm trying to steal her idea or anything. I'm just going to show, demonstrate on this particular plush how I make all my different plushies so the same method is applied to no matter what you're doing so I hope you like the tutorial and let's get started okay so the first thing you need for your plushies or pouches is a pattern now I never print my patterns off because it's just too much effort with getting it to the right size that I need so all I do is I find items around the house like um, a tub of glaze or anything like that and then I just draw it on paper to the measurements that I need now the easiest thing to do is to actually take your sheet of paper and fold it in half and then draw your pattern on one side and then cut it out and that way you're gonna make sure that your pattern is identical on both sides and you don't have to worry about um, like misshapes or anything like that so then once you have your pattern, all you need to do is just draw it on your felt and you need one piece for the front and one piece for the back. And on the, my pattern, all I did as well was I just cut out a little piece for the mouth and that way when I have my pattern piece, I can just place it there and I'll know exactly where my mouth is supposed to go right in the center. So what I do always is for little details like this, I use this fabric glue and um, it just says felt glue, bonds felt glitter, pom-poms and more, water cleanup, dries clear and it's non-toxic. If you're going to get any kind of fabric glue, I do suggest that you get one that does dry clear because that way you don't have to worry about what color your fabric or your felt is, you can use it on anything. So what I always do is I just glue on the little mouth detail right in the center and then I will proceed on to working with the lining. So for this white Mamigoma I'm going to be using this yellow polka dot fabric. So what you need to do is just take the back and take your pattern piece and you want to leave um, maybe a half an inch or one centimeter seam allowance on the sides and this will just allow you to have the lining with finished edges rather than these fraying ones. And then for transferring my patterns onto either felt or fabric, I use these um, non-permanent markers and this one is the fine one, so it looks like this. Now some people like to just take their pattern and uh, pin it onto the fabric and then cut around it, but I don't like to do that only because it bends your fabric and sometimes you can end up cutting it out kind of wrong. So what I always do is I just take my pen and I trace the fabric around. And you notice that I'm skipping all the fins and the little feet and this is only because that when you make your pouches there isn't actually much space or to put into the little feet or the arms so I just ignore that completely and all I do is make the lining for the inside of the body part and then I just stuff the feet. So once you have your pattern traced you're going to need to do that the second time for the back piece. And you'll notice that in between these two I left a little bit of space and that's just to make sure that both my pieces have the same amount of seam allowance. So now I'm just going to cut these out around leaving about half an inch of extra fabric. Now to make sure that you don't have any frayed edges inside your plush, what I always do is I fold the seam allowance over. But because this is a round shape, then what you need to do is create little slits um, all along the side here, cutting only up as far as the line that you have drawn. So I'm going to do that now and then I will show you what to do next. Okay, so now I have cut the edges of the fabric and if you look at it, the actual cut only goes as far as where the pattern is traced 
So now I'm going to actually finish off the edges. Now if you're working with something that was, uh, say, rectangular or had corners, the easiest thing to do to prevent the corner from fraying is to just take this corner and fold it over like such, and then proceed with the edges. So first folding this side over, and then folding this side over, and what you will see is this nice point and no fraying edges there. For rounder shapes like this, you have to cut these slits. And then using your fabric glue, you just want to apply a thin line of glue all along inside of the trace part. And then you're just going to fold over the little cut that you've made. And so as you can see, when you go around the entire piece, you will be left with a nice round shape with these edges finished off. So I will be back once I have these done. Okay, so now you have all the edges glued down, and here I'm just using a heavier object to just hold these sides down while they're drying. What you want to do is take your pattern piece with the front or the back, and you want to be looking at the wrong side of it. And then you're going to take your lining fabric and put it down wrong side to wrong side, like so. And then what you want to do is once you have it nicely aligned, um, you want to glue it down just from about here all the way around the bottom. You want to leave the top open because that's where we're going to sew on the closures. Okay, so once you have the lining glued on to the bottom part here, what you want to do is add some sort of a closure to the top. Now, you can use Velcro, but I don't like to use Velcro with felt because sometimes Velcro has a very strong pull to it, and when you're trying to open this, you might actually end up damaging some of the, vel some of the felt. So what I use instead are these snap closures. And where I live, I can buy these in clear plastic like this, or silver metal or black metal. And for these, I'm just going to use these plastic ones. So all you need to do is just find the center top of your plush. So you want to take your plushie and find where the center is. And then you're just going to sew one part of the closure onto the inside like so. Okay, so now you can see why I leave the top part unglued here and that's because when you're sewing on the closures you have to make sure that you're only sewing through the lining layer and not the front layer because you don't want to see any stitching over here. Now when you go on to sew on the second part of your closure, the other side, the easiest way to make sure that you have it aligned is when you take your first piece that you've just sewn on and you place the pattern down onto it you can see the middle seam running through right here and it aligns perfectly with the snap closure so all you have to do is just place your pattern down on the second piece as well and see where the middle line goes and just place your snap closure right in the same space and just sew it on there and that way when you're then closing your plushie, you'll be sure that your snap closure matches up. Okay, so now that you have the snap closure sewed on, you're going to start wanting to put these pieces together. Now because you're not going to use any lining for the tail, you're going to have a gap in the lining where this runs. So the first thing you want to do is just sew that shut. So that way when you have your pouch and you're putting things inside, you won't have anything get stuck in the little feet or interfere with the stuffing that you're going to put in here. So next you're going to need a needle and thread and for this one I'm using white just for the outside. And now what you want to do is sew around all four layers 
from about this area to here all the way around the bottom and you want to make sure that you go around the little flippers and around the feet as well where you're going to put in some stuffing but you don't want to uh, sew any further up from here because that's what you're going to use to open your pouch. Okay, once you're about three quarters of the way of sewing the feet, what you want to do is stuff them then and then you can close up the stitching. And you can either use cotton or polyfill stuffing for this, but what I actually use for flatter pieces like this is this thing called body and it comes in these really large sheets. Um, it, you can buy it per meter and basically all it is is polyfill stuffing in like a flat kind of a form. So if you're making any kind of padding or cases or anything like that, it's actually perfect because with polyfill, if you try to stretch it out, you always get lumps, whereas with the body, it's already pre-made for you. Okay, so now that you have your pouch sewed all the way around here, what you need to do is then sew each one of these individually, just to finish, up, finish off the edges and then have a nice pouch. Okay, so now that you have the top sewn, you'll see that you have a really nice pouch that you can put anything into that you want. And all you have left to do is just add some details onto the vase. And what I do most of the time is just paint them on. Um, I just use regular acrylic paint like these and a brush and then just paint these on, let it dry and that's all there is to the patches that I make. So I hope you guys like this tutorial and have fun crafting and I'll talk to you later. Bye!